Hello, Brother Sewing and Crafting family. Angela Wolf here, and I'm so excited to be with you. So today's show, you're going to use a little bit of my design center, a little bit of my connection, the luminaire if you have one, and the scan and cut. And Jennifer's going to show you how to design and create the cutest St. Patrick's Day placemat you've ever seen. So say hi, say where you're from, and we'll be right back. All right, I see you all rolling in. This is going to be such a fun show. So we are live streaming on Facebook and YouTube for the Brother Channels, and you'll be able to go back and watch this. So Jennifer's going to show you how to design this. So you might want to watch it first and go back and watch the replay. So to do that, if you're on Facebook, be sure to share this to your page, share it with a friend. And if you're on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to the channels and you'll never miss a live video. So let's bring Jennifer to the party. Brother educator Jennifer Gleick, how are you? I'm doing good. How are you, Angela? Good. I'm so excited to see you. My favorite part of seeing you besides you is your beautiful fabric in the background. Every time I see you, I want to go fold my fabric and make it look as cute as yours. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then every time I see you, I say, that's the neat part of the room. But with the work area, you're not going to see the work area. Oh, exactly, exactly. Well, I see all the Brothers Sewing and Crafting family rolling in, and I am so excited. You have to give them a sneak peek at this adorable placemat that you're making today. Well, um, I thought about it, and I said I need to put together a um, some kind of a holiday project. We've passed Valentine's Day, and so our next holiday is... Uh, St. Patrick's Day, and I always feel lucky on St. Patrick's Day. I do have a, <laughs> I am a little Irish, so um, St. Patrick's <laughs> Day, I love it. And so I put together this cute little placemat. Oh my gosh, that is so adorable. And we use a little bit of the Scan and Cut. We use the Luminaire with my design center. And we're going to, I'm going to demonstrate my connection back and forth to put this together. It's all done in the hoop. So I put the, the back on in the hoop. And the only thing you have to stitch is the final stitch around the edge um, once you turn it inside out to close your opening up. So I think I love in the hoop projects. And for those of you that are totally new to the party, in the hoop means that it's all done in the hoop. So by the way, even though she's using the Brother Luminaire, which we all love, but not everybody has that. If you have my design center, you'll probably be able to still follow along. So yes. if you don't have my connection, you can still follow along. You just have to make a few tweaks. We like to show right. you like the creme de la creme, <laughs> and then you can cut it down. So this will be very exciting. Yes. So I thought I'd walk you through putting it together. I'm not, I'm not sure we'll get to stitching, but at least you'll have all the pieces. And then you can just go to your luminaire. I don't know what the weather is like where you are. Currently here in Oregon, it is snowing. So it is a good day to be in your sewing room. Oh, it is. Are you kidding? That's all we've had here lately. Snow. It's sunny out right now, and I just got an alert that we're getting a storm. So I guess I'm going to enjoy the sunshine of my vitamin D for two hours. <laughs> for two hours, yes. So um, we all get right. started if everyone's ready. Let's get started. Everybody's saying thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm um, looking at the comments make sure I'm not, they can all hear us, see us. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is to start, right. I'm going to go to my scan and cut. Okay. So I'm going to be using the, the new Scan and Cut SDX325, and I'm going to switch my camera so that All you right. can see the steps. While she's swapping, I'll just make sure I can see you all rolling. I'm laughing at some of your comments. Hi, Vicki. Helen is in today. Oh, yes. Wait a minute. The next holiday is Mardi Gras. How did we forget about that? Well, I think this placemat would work. You just have to change the colors up a sure. little bit, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right, because here's being in Oregon, I don't really think about Mardi Gras. I always forget, except one time I was in Louisiana. I'll tell you what, that was the most fun I've ever had. I was down there visiting one of the brother dealers, and I was able to get some fabulous cake <laughs> and uh, some beautiful beads. The nice. just for fun, not for walking down. <laughs> yes, yes. All right, all right. So I'm at my scan and cut, and we're gonna go and we're gonna use my connection for this 
a design. So from my home screen to use my connection, I am going to scroll to the left and my connection pops up there on the screen. I'm going to touch that. And I'm gonna be using a built-in design on my connection. My connection with the Scan and Cut, uh, the SDX325 or the SDX330D will allow you to send any built-in design from your Scan and Cut to your Luminaire um, wirelessly. So we're going to be sending a design right now. So I'm going to go to Send. And then I'm gonna choose Pattern. And I am going to um, send the word lucky. That is a built-in design from my scan and cut. So I'm going to go over here to category three and subcategory one is where I'm going to find um, some pre-done words that I can use. And I'm gonna scroll all the way down until I find the design. They're in alphabetical order. So there's lucky. I'm going to select that. I'm not going to change the size or anything. When this sends it over to the Luminaire, it goes into my design center and I can change the size there if I need to. So I'm just going to hit set. And then on this screen, it shows that it's placed our design on the mat. And I want you to notice that there's a, a grayed out area to the right. And if I scroll down to the bottom, what that represents is the white area is the area inside of our largest hoop on the Luminaire. So it's 10 and 5 eighths by 16. So I could add multiple designs in that area and send them all over to my design center at once. But in this case, I'm just going to transfer my word over. So all I have to do to do that is hit transfer. I get a message. You can only transfer one design back and forth at a time. It gets up in the cloud. And once I transfer that design, it's there. If I go to transfer another design, it's going to override it. So all this is asking me, is it okay to update that data in the cloud? Yes, I'm going to tell it okay. And it is now transferred over to my Luminaire. So that we've taken care of step one. That was pretty simple. Pretty simple. Very simple. And if you don't have my connection on there, you can also use this on a USB stick, correct? Correct. You could put the design on a USB and do it that way. Okay. Yes. So that was our first step. So now I'm going to go over to my Luminaire, which is a different camera. All right, I'm um, just swapping Jennifer out while she's changing cameras. I can see some of you, everybody's saying, I love this. Uh, I feel lucky what, like the Irish too. I'm not Irish, but I love this project. I'm definitely adding it to my decor. <laughs> and I'm gonna turn my light off here to try to get some of that glare. Oh, good, we can see you great. All right, I'm, I have a, I have a small sewing area, so I'm, Trying to get behind the camera without knocking it over. I'm just going to answer um, uh, Jennifer real quick while you're there. Um, I just saw somebody ask, so I'm just going to bring this up before the comments go too far. Could I save it on a USB and take it to the Luminaire? Um, I that depends on which um, upgrade you have, doesn't it? Because you can't technically take a design. Correct. The, to the Luminaire. Correct. You yeah. could, um, you could. I'll find, I'll get the answer while you're doing this. I'll double check because there's a technicality there, Edna. Yes, so exactly. I'll let Jennifer keep rolling and I'll get an answer yes. for you. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to keep going. We're going to go and we're going to design our placemat now. So I'm over at my Luminaire and I'm from the home screen. There, the first step is because I'm going to be designing in the, uh, design center, I want to be able to line things up uh, exactly where I need them. So I'm going to first go into my settings of my screen or settings of my machine here up on top. And I am going to go to page eight. 
and I'm going to make sure that my frame size is where I need it to be. We're going to be using the largest hoop for the luminaire, which is the 10 and 5 eighths by 16. So I already have that set. But I also want to put a grid on my screen so that I can line my details of my placement up, placemat up. So I'm going to go to my grid and I'm going to change this to a one inch grid and I'm going to touch OK. Now, when I go into my design center, my design space has a grid for me to work with, which makes it a lot easier. So from my design center, we're going to start, we're going to do an in the hoop project. So I have to think about when I do an in, a, in the hoop project, what my steps are. So my first step is usually putting down a placement line. So I'm going to go into my stamps to do my placement line. And I want my placemat to have rounded corners. So I'm going to use the rounded square shape here. And I'm going to touch OK. Now I want to make this larger. I want a large placemat. So I'm going to open up the size. And I'm going to change my size to 14. I want my placemat to be 14 inches long. And then I want my placemat to be 10 inches wide. Close enough. So now I'm going to hit OK. And I need to make that outline my stitches. So I am going to go into the line properties here. I'm going to choose a double stitch. And I'm going to choose any color and touch OK. And then I'm going to touch the uh, line fill or flood fill for my line properties, which is the paint bucket. And I'm going to touch my line. Now I've applied those stitch settings to that line. I'm going to touch next. And I'm going to put this in my memory because I want to come back and use this again. So I'm going to touch memory and I'm gonna save it to my machine. And then I'm going to go ahead and sit, hit set. The machine is gonna ask me, do I want to, it's going to convert it to an embroidery pattern. Do I wanna continue? And I'm gonna say yes. So now I'm in the embroidery screen. So now I have my placement line. So now my next step would be, I need to place my batting because I did use batting in the placemat and I need to tack it down. So we need to do a tack down stitch. Now there's multiple ways to do this, but I'm gonna show you what the way I do it. Other educators may do it another way, but this is easiest for me. So I'm going to go to add, and I'm going to go back to my design center. And then I'm going to go up here to the pocket, and I'm gonna retrieve that design that we saved Here on the screen, this is all the things that I have saved in my design center. I'm going to go to the very first one on the list. That is the last item that I saved. And I'm going to touch OK. That places that on the screen. And I am going to go back into the line properties. Change it from the default, which is the satin stitch, back to a double stitch. And I'm going to choose another color. I want to make sure to choose a different color so that when I go into embroidery, my machine, I can, I can see the different steps. So I'm going to touch OK. I'm going to touch the flood fill. Touch my line. Hit Next. And hit Set. Again, we're going to say OK. Now I've got my two steps. I have my placement stitch, my tack down stitch for my batting, 
And now I need one more tack down stitch so that I can put my background fabric. So I'm gonna go back to add my design center again. We're gonna retrieve that same outline because we know it's the correct size. I'm gonna change the properties one more time. Another color, back to our flood fill, change the color or touch the line to change the color. and set one more time. So now we've got all of our stitches for tacking down our fabrics. I cannot see the computer screen, Angela, so if any questions come up, I'm gonna rely on you. Well, I have a few questions on the scanning cut, which I'll answer when you switch cameras because I got some answers for them, but you, it looks great and you just keep rolling. And I see somebody asking, how can I do this? If you have my design center, check your machine. If you got the Dream Machine, the Stellaire, uh, Luminaire, there's a few that have, so check under that. Your buttons yes. might be different if it's not the Luminaire, but it's close. Yes, the icons will all be very similar in all of the machines. So you should be able to follow along. Perfect. Looking okay, good, Jennifer. so we're gonna, what was that? Looking good. All right. So I'm going to go to add. And we're going to go to my design center one more time because we're going into my design center. And we're we're putting our whole thing together there. Now, I know this is repetitive, but I think it's good to be repetitive so that we get the idea and um, kind of get it in our brain how to put things together. So I'm going to, again, retrieve my design or my, my outline. And this time though, I don't want it to stitch the outline because we're gonna do our background fill. So I'm gonna go into my line properties and I'm gonna touch no sew and touch okay. Again, touch the flood fill and touch the line that tells the machine we're not gonna actually stitch that, but it's still giving me a guide as an outline for our shape. So now I'm gonna add in our background fill. So I'm going to go into the background fill properties. or the region fill properties. And we've got multiple options. We have a regular embroidery fill stitch. We can do a stipple if you just wanted to stipple the background, or we have our motifs that we can select from. So I'm gonna select a motif. I'm gonna touch select. And for this project, I chose 006 and I'm gonna touch okay. You can choose any of the designs that you'd like but I'm gonna stick with what I did and I am going to choose yet another color just so it's a different color in my step outs and touch okay. I'm gonna choose the region flood fill bucket and I'm gonna to touch the inside of my placemat. I'm gonna to touch next. And here we're gonna change a couple things. I want my quilting or my background quilting to be bigger. So I'm gonna go in here to the size and I'm gonna change it to 150 and touch okay. And on the Luminaire, notice that it automatically makes that change so you can see it. I'm gonna make sure that my outline stitch is off because I don't need an outline around it. And then down at the bottom here, we can change the thickness. This will be a triple stitch, but I don't really want my quilting to stand out all that much. So I'm gonna change it to the thin stitching, which is the single stitch and touch okay. Now I'm gonna hit set and okay again. And as you can see on the embroidery side, we are building our placemat. So now we need our Lucky and our four leaf clovers. 
you can probably guess what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back into add my design center. I'm going to go back and get my shape because I want everything to fit in that shape. Now this time, I want to go get the Lucky that we pulled from our scan and cut. So to do that, I'm going to go into Shapes. And if you notice on the top of our screen, we have all of our categories and we have a brand new category in My Design Center. It looks like our little scan and cut. So if I touch that, it's gonna tell me to wait. And these are all the things that I've sent from the scan and cut. The first thing on your list is always the last thing that you sent over. So we can see we have the word lucky. It's already selected. I'm gonna touch okay. And it's gonna bring it up on the screen. I'm gonna to touch size because I want it to be a little bigger. Remember how I said we could change it on the scan and cut if we wanted to, but I knew that I could change my size in my design center and I wanted to do it relative to my placemat. So this way I can see the size as I go. I'm going to change the size to approximately 2.26, 2.25 times seven by seven. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the size up proportion key. That's approximate. And I'm gonna to touch okay. Now, because my placemat is going vertically in the hoop, but I want lucky to be placed at the top, I'm going to go to rotate and I'm gonna to rotate to the left 90 degrees. The word is still in the center of my design and I wanna move it to the top of my placemat. So I'm just gonna use the arrow keys. And as I do that, I'm gonna move it so it's about using my grid lines for to line up till it's about eyeball about an inch and a half. The top of my letters will be about an inch from the top of my placemat and then touch okay. And now we're gonna add our four leaf clovers. So we're gonna go back into shapes. And this time I'm going to go into open shapes. And these are some fun open shapes that are um, built in for us on the Luminaire for Design Center. And at the bottom, we do have a four leaf clover. So I'm gonna to touch, select that and touch okay. And it's a little big, so I'm gonna go into size and I'm gonna scale it down proportionally till it's about four by four. And touch okay. I'm gonna rotate it again, like I did the word, 90 degrees to the left. And then using my arrow keys, I am going to move my clover, can you see on the screen that the clover has a red box around it? Yeah, we sure can. Okay, so I'm gonna use that red box to line up my clover where I want it. So I'm gonna move it so that the red box, the top edge of that red box is about an inch here on my grid. And then I'm gonna move it down Again, using the red box and my grid makes it really easy to line things up. Now I want a second clover, so I'm gonna to touch okay. And right in my design center, we have a duplicate button. I'm gonna duplicate it. And then I'm also going to mirror image it, so it's going the other way with our mirror image button. And then I'm gonna go back into size. I'm not gonna actually change the size, but I'm doing that so that I can get back to my arrow keys and I'm gonna move my other clover to the other side of my placemat. Again, lining up that red box 
and I'm going to touch OK. <clears throat> so now we're going to go ahead and apply some um, design properties to all of our lines and our clovers and our word. So first I'm going to go to the line properties and I'm going to choose no sew because I don't want outlines on any of my um, any of my pieces here. And I'm going to go to the uh, line flood fill. I'm going to touch my outline. I'm going to touch my word and I'm going to touch the two clovers, not the stems. Then I'm going to go into my region properties. And for my word lucky, I'm going to choose a gold color and make sure it's on the embroidery fill stitch and touch OK. And I'm going to choose my flood fill bucket and touch the inside of the word. Then I'm going to go back into my properties and I'm going to choose a green. Make sure it's on my embroidery fill stitch. Touch OK. And I'm going to touch just one of my clovers. And I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to choose a different color for my other clover. Now, the reason that I'm going to do this, I will explain to you in, once we get it over to the embroidery side in my connection. It's going to make a difference. So I'm going to make my clover a different color. And then the last thing I want to do is I want to make those stems kind of decorative. So I'm going to go into my line properties. I'm going to go into my motif, motif stitches. And I'm going to touch select. And I really like number eight here. For some reason, it looks Irish to me. It's probably because it's kind of plaid looking. I'm going to touch OK. I'm going to choose a different green. And I'm going to choose my line flood fill and touch both of my stems. <clears throat> it looks so good. I love this. Isn't it easy? It's so fun to design in the design center. I mean, your possibilities are endless. I'm gonna touch next. Now we're gonna see a preview of what it looks like. And there's one more thing I wanna do before I send this over to the embroidery side. Up on the top here, we can scroll through our um, different color stitch stitches. And I'm gonna go until I get to the gold on our word. I wanna put some under stitching on the stitches for my word so that it really pops out. So I'm gonna go here. The fourth option here is our under stitching. I'm gonna turn that on and I'm going to touch OK. And now I'm going to hit set. And I'm going to touch OK. Now we have our elements of our placemat. So now there's one more step. We need the step to put our backing on, to hold our backing. So for the last time, we're going to go in, we're going to go to add, and we're going to go into My Design Center one last time. I'm going to go back up into our pocket and grab that outline and touch OK. I'm going to go to the line properties, make it a triple stitch because I really want to hold um, the placemat together. I'm going to choose a color I haven't chosen yet and touch OK. I'm going to choose the line flood fill and touch my line. And now I'm going to go into the eraser here. And I like the square eraser and I always make it a little bigger so I can see it usually about 40 and touch OK. And over here on what will be the bottom of our placemat, I usually erase about four inches using my grid line as a guide. And that will tell the machine that we just want to go around. Not all the way. We want to leave an opening. So I'm going to hit next. 
I'm going to hit set and I'm hit OK. So now we have our placemat all done, ready to stitch out. So that was so simple. You showed the steps so well too, Jennifer. I'm, I'm watching all the comments. Everybody's like, it's so nice to watch step by step. And as I mentioned, it's I prefer to watch a whole tutorial first and then go back and hit pause, you know, as you do it. And I see somebody asking, how do you learn my design center, Cindy? Uh, I think Cindy West said that. Well, first of all, there is a manual, but you know, Cindy, I my hands down, the best way would be to go back and watch some of the brother videos for my design center and just as you do each one. Like this, what Jennifer just showed, showed so many different things in there. Uh, great, great tutorial. There's your placemat. <laughs> There's the placemat. It's it's ready. So there is one more step though that I'm looking here. I just want to make sure. Okay, it it sometimes sometimes when I do things in my design center and bring them over to embroidery, my steps might be out of place. Like it'll pop a step up here when I need it to be at the end. And the easy way to change that is we do have uh, an icon here where we can move steps around. But it did put my final um, my final stitch at the end of my design. So that's good. So, so Jennifer, for somebody who, uh, by the way, hardly anybody in any of the shows have shown that button right there. So for yes. somebody who's like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. So if you click that, you can actually move your yes. pieces up and down, right? So, so say this, this piece, I wanted this piece to stitch up here. Mm -hmm. I can use these and it will actually take that and move it up in my step out. Love that feature. I just had to stop you on that. And I know you yours were in the right order, but you're the first person yes, that brought that up. And it's such a great, just a quick thing. You know, as embroidery progresses in some of these higher end machines, they just make things so easy. So yes, it's in my notes because yesterday when I ran through this, it didn't do that. Oh, <laughs> and so I had to use that button. So then when I, then I just noticed that it did it in this, this instance. So now I've moved it. But I want it to stitch, obviously, after I do all of my um, decorative stuff. So I'm just going to go and right here now, it's giving me the option, put it at the end of my stitching. So now I've moved that to the end of my design. Yeah. So I'm going to touch OK. Now, now, if you noticed on my placemat, my clovers were not actually stitched. They were done with fabric. So I'm going to turn them into an applique and send them over to my scan and cut. So to do that, I'm going to use the My Connection feature, and I'm going to show you how we can change that right on the screen and send it to the scan and cut. So the last step to do our placemat, you could obviously just stitch this with stitches if you like the way it looks, but I'm going to take it one step further. So we're going to touch our Instant Applique button. And when we do that now with my connection, we get two uh, options. We used to just get the applique patch where we would make the patch around our embroidery. But now we can actually tell the machine what part of our design do we want to be an applique. So I'm gonna go applique patch for selected colors. And actually, let me just go return. I wanna point something out. There's a red box around our design here. You Can you see that? Yeah, we can. I just thought about the fact that I need to make sure that my piece with my clover is selected. So I'm gonna use these arrows and now my red box is around the clovers. <laughs> so I'm gonna to touch now my instant applique and my applique patch for selected colors. And on the screen, you can see the four steps that we have for our applique, or not our applique, for our step outs of our, I'm just gonna turn the uh, sound off on my cell phone. I forgot to do that. I was wondering, I was like, I keep thinking of Lucky as an animal and all of a sudden I just heard this noise and I'm like, maybe you do have an animal named Lucky. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 okay. <laughs> that was, that was not okay. <laughs> That's why you love the live shows. <laughs> yes. I told you I was I was getting things ready this morning. I knew I'd forget something. 
<laughs> That's okay. Yesterday, Susan's cat's tail kept hitting the screen. So why not? You just have a noise. There, there no we worries. go. I, no, my cats are locked out this morning. So. <laughs> okay. So we've got our, our design here with um, our decorative stitches. I'm going to choose just the first color which is my one clover. Now, when I was in my design center, I said that I was changing the second clover to a different color. And this is why I did it. Because if I would have done them both the same color, when I touched that color on my screen, it would have selected both my clovers. I could have done it that way. It would have made them both appliques and sent it to my scan and cut, but then they're sent to the scan and cut as a grouped object and it would not be able to move the two separate clovers on my screen. So if I do them separately, it sends them to my scan and cut as two individual clovers. So I'm gonna choose the first clover. I'm gonna hit next. I'm gonna choose a satin stitch around my clover. And then I like a wider satin stitch around my appliques. And this is just a preference but you have the ability to change to whatever you'd like. And the angle on my, I guess it likes my fingers better this morning. 0 0.20 and touch okay. And I'm gonna touch preview. Now look what it's done. It's turned that stitching into an applique. I'm gonna hit next and there it is on the screen. I'm gonna to touch okay. And now I wanna do that one more time because I want my other clover to be an applique. So back into instant applique, the applique patch for selected colors. Now I've got my first applique piece. So I need to expand here so I can see my other colors and touch the third color, which is our other clover and hit next. Again, change it to a zigzag. I'm gonna change it so my stitch width is the same on that clover and touch preview. There it is. Now, I do get a message on the screen that says that it can't display. All that means is on this screen, it can't display them both so that they look like an applique. They can't, it, for some reason it won't put the checkered, which represents the fabric, but that's not a big deal. We're just gonna hit okay. And I'm gonna touch okay. And now my design is ready to stitch with the appliques. And I could stitch this the way we all have learned to do applique where we would place the fabric, tack it down, trim it, and then do the applique. But I'm gonna use my connection and send my appliques to my scan and cut so I can cut my pieces. And the way I do that is I'm gonna go into memory. And if you look down at the bottom, we now have a scan and cut on our screen. I'm gonna to touch that. It's giving me the same type of message that the scan and cut gave saying there is a design out there in your cloud memory. If I send this, it's gonna override it, is that okay? Yes, that's okay. And I'm gonna hit transfer and it's done it. The last step, which I would highly recommend when you're doing this is go back into memory and save your design either to a USB or to your machine. So in the event something happens, you can get back to your design. So now the last step is to go to our scan and cut and grab our clovers and get them cut. And then we're ready to do all of our stitching. That sounds fantastic. So I'm gonna run over to, run over to the scan and cut here. <laughs> While she's running, I'll just answer a couple of these questions. Uh, with the help of our dear other dear friend, other brand ambassador, Cindy Hogan, I just got a few answers for you. So, hey, Vicki, uh, how do you move the start stop button on all the tack down? runs as you don't have those knots on the back. Cindy says that you need to use software for that. So you can't do that on the machine. And I saw a couple of you asking, can you take designs from the scan and cut to the luminaire only through my connection? And someone else asked about um, 
scanning. Hold on, let me just make sure I have this correct. Uh, you asked, can you scan in something into the scan and cut, take it to the luminaire, vice versa? No, you need to use my connection and only built-in content that is not Disney. So hope that helps a little bit. I know new things, it's like I got to, there's so much to learn, but I'm learning yeah. as well. And I see a lot of people here, Jennifer, saying, I they love your tutorial. You give such good instructions. Susie said, thank you for showing some something that's a little more advanced on using this software, but showing it so well that they can go back and follow. I agree. Oh, well, thank you so much. Absolutely. All right, so we're back at the scanning cut, and I'm just going to show you how to grab those um, pieces from my connection that we sent from our design. We're back at the home screen. We're gonna go to the left again and go to my connection. This time we're gonna retrieve designs. So we have two options, send or retrieve. We wanna retrieve those designs that we sent from the Luminaire. And when we get here, we can either, if we've saved something in my connection on the machine, we could grab it from the machine's memory. But in this case, we, sent it from the Luminaire, which is our wireless LAN device. So we're gonna choose that. And look what it does. It brings up our placemat. So we're gonna to go to the applique button here, which is the shield. It's the same shield that's on our machine. And there are our two clovers. Can you see that? We oh, can. No. So I'm gonna choose the first clover, touch okay, and set. There's my clover on the screen. Now, if I wanted to cut them both at the same time, I would go to add, choose my second clover, touch okay, set. And then just like any other scan and cut project, I would place my fabrics on the mat. In this case, I have, I'm gonna switch cameras so I can just, Go back here. Now you can see me. <laughs> we can see you. Hey, I thanks, have... Cindy. Cindy Hogan popped in the chat and asked some of the technical questions. All right, oh, keep cool. going. <laughs> so I have just my fabric here, and I have the Brother Instant Applique Contact um, fusible on the back. And so I would put this with the fusible down on my um, standard mat, cut it with my standard blade or my rotary blade. And then I've got my project all ready to stitch. Unbelievable. That's so simple. So uh, just so I know somebody's going to ask about what you put on the back of that fabric. Uh, can they leave the paper on that when they put it onto the mat? Or do they take the paper off? Or does it matter? I take the paper off. Okay. And then I put it um, with the fusible side down on my standard mat. On the standard mat. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Rotary blade would work fabulous with that. Rotary blade would work fabulous. <laughs> All right, let me see. I see a lot of people just saying thank you. If you have any questions for Jennifer, holler. I'm so here. could you give them the process then uh, because you're not going to stitch it all the way through. So you would embroider all of that. You just give them yes. the process of how to put this together. Sure. So so we've got it all lined up on the machine. So the first, your first step is going to be your placement line. So you're going to stitch that and then you're going to put your batting on top once that stitches. And then you're going to stitch your second step. The second step is the tack down for your batting. Once you stitch your batting down, I trim around the batting, trim the excess. And then I'm going to put my background fabric. So that my background fabric being the green that I used for the mm -hmm. background of my placemat. I'm going to put that down and stitch step three. Step three is going to tack down my background fabric just to keep it in place. And then I'm going to go continue through my design. It'll stitch your, your background fill, and then it'll stitch your word, and then it'll have your um, clovers, and it'll do a placement line for your clover. It'll do the tack down line for your clover. So you do your placement line, put your fabric down for your clover, tack it down and then it'll do the satin stitch. It'll do the second clover. And then your next stitch will be your stems. And then your final stitch will be putting your background or your backing fabric face down over the top of your placemat in the hoop. 
You can tape it in the corners, however, hold it down however you'd like. And then your final stitch will stitch all the way around except for that opening that we left on that final stitch. Once, once that's done, you can take it out of the hoop. I trimmed a quarter of an inch all the way around, turn it inside out through your opening, ironed it, and then I did a just an edge stitch around the edge so that I could close that opening and give it a finished look. Yeah, that looks great. Yeah, <laughs> thanks, Cindy. Cindy said, great project. <laughs> I love it. So just a quick question. Now, this is a good one, too. And I see some of you asking questions about your specific machines. And if I don't get to all of those answers, because we don't know those off the top of our head, you want to just check your machine, call your brother dealer. You could also check with um, brother customer service, too, if it's something technical. But um, when you're doing that applique, if you didn't want to make it an, app an applique, you could have completely made that just a stitch, too. It was yes. just those yes. buttons. So yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Once we got it all the way over to the embroidery, it was in stitches, so you yeah. could just stitch it out. Ab absolutely. So I just want to point that out because maybe you don't want to do applique. You could do the entire thing with stitches, do some variegated thread. That would look very mm -hmm. cool out there with some greens. Yeah. And uh, uh, do you, did you end up uh, increasing the size of the clover before you cut it? I know some people, when they cut the applique, they like to increase it. They'll either say, I love it how everyone, they either know they're scan and cut, they're like two beeps or one beep or a certain yeah. size. <laughs> Um, surprisingly with my connection, it sends it over and it's perfect. Love I don't that. have to change the size at all. I just cut it and it fits perfect in my stitching. That is really good to know. Good to yeah. know. And actually that's a good tip because, you know, my connection's fairly new. It just came out this last yes. August. A lot of people haven't had a chance to use it. I see somebody here that just got their scan and cut. They're taking it out of the box. They can't wait. So it's a little intimidating at first. Like, do how does it, how's it going to go over there? Is it going to show up right? <laughs> so um, ask Jennifer and you'll get your good answer on that. Uh, Bridget, how do I get the upgrade? So it depends. Like, Cindy earlier in the chat was talking about upgrades for software. Check with your brother dealer. So you need to, I put the brother website down below, call your brother dealer, tell what machine you have or what upgrades you're looking for. And that's where you'd find those. Yes. All right. And, see, and uh, someone said something about a mug rug, a mug rug. You could do this exact same thing. Oh yes. Just change your size. Uh, Lynn, no, there won't be written instructions. So for this one, you're just going to have to save it and you can go back and just hit play and stop and play and stop. So yeah, that would be the best. And you did such a good, you know, uh, Jennifer, somebody was saying, um, you were explaining so well, touching the screen at the right time. And Cindy said, I think she has notes. That's the best way to do it. Cause then you're not like, wait a minute, I forgot something. And yes, I do have, did, did write notes so that, so that I would follow myself and not get ahead of myself. But that's, there's so many steps. And if yeah. you forget one, then you're going back, which when we're by ourselves, we do it all the time. But when you're right. live, it's a whole different thing. Right. Uh, yep, Beth, that's what she says. Marcia says, thank you, so cute. I'm just making sure. Oh, Vicki wants to know, what stabilizer did you use? Um, I just, my favorite for anything that I'm going to use is a just a no-show mesh stabilizer. I uh, And it's a cutaway. Perfect. Yeah. Cut away. There you go. <laughs> uh, does the scan and cut have updates like the Luminaire? Well, updates, not upgrades. There's a difference. Yes. yes. And it does have <laughs> updates. Cut. Yeah. And on the scan and cut, if you go to Canvas Workspace, there's a lot of information there as well. Um, so if your machine needs an update, if it's hooked up to Wi-Fi, it'll have a little notification on it. I know that because I just had one maybe a month yeah. ago. <laughs> Maybe not even that long ago, but last time. So that's the best part of Wi-Fi. It just lets you know. Everyone say, love the project. And by the way, if you have my design center and you don't have the Luminaire, test this out. I made a ton of mug rugs on my dream machine. Mm -hmm. A ton. Uh, <laughs> absolutely love it. I love my design center. It's so much fun. All right. Um I'm just checking. Cindy, I don't know the answer to that one because I don't have a purchase design, but I'm just making Can you sure. Can remove quilting stitches from a purchase? I, I, don't, I don't know. Remember. You probably need software for that. Out of my, out of my basket. <laughs> yeah, oh, right. 
questions. Uh, what is that backing brother called again? Kathy wants to know that you put um, on the back of that fabric. It is called brother. It's a very, it's iron on instant applique contact sheets. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, does no show mesh shrink when you wash and dry the project? I've not had that. I haven't before. had any problems. Yeah. I've, I've not had that experience. All my projects, I haven't had anything like that. But that's a good question, Jane, because some question. some might make that. Oh, thanks, Yolanda. All right, this was a fabulous tutorial. Jennifer, I'm so excited. I'm going to try this. And you know what the best part? Is that you gave everybody this weeks in advance instead of like the day before where everyone's exactly. trying to rush it. You got two weeks, I think. March 18th, 17th, March 17th. I can't yes, remember. Yes, March 17th. Yes. <laughs> so, I know so it's you, in March. So you could go and make yourself, you know, your placemats for your corn. I saw someone say corned beef and cabbage. Yes, that's my favorite. So make and your placemats so for your dinner. Absolutely. And while your mind is thinking of creative things, those little, um, those little three leaf clovers, four, four leaf clovers, whatever, you could make them bigger and turn them into little, uh, little places for your cups. So think outside the box yeah. and add to your table and be sure when you do the photos, look above hashtag brother. So hashtag brother scan and cut. They love to see what you're working on. So be sure to share. You never know. They might share what you're doing. Yeah. Jennifer. Great to see you. I see somebody here that's in your town that said, oh, I love Jennifer's projects. <laughs> oh, cool. Yes, very <laughs> awesome. So thank you, thank you. You can keep asking your questions. Even if you are not watching this live, you could always call Brother Customer Service or the Brother Social Team will be in here answering you. So until next time, Jennifer, I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you Me for too. an awesome project and great instructions. You're so very welcome. All right. Bye, everyone. Thanks Bye -bye. for watching.